Hi, this is Coach Heichel. I'm bringing you a podcast today over the major organic compounds or the chemicals of life that our body needs to survive and function. First of all, let's talk about the six essential elements. There are six elements that we have to have in our bodies at all time to be functional. The first one being carbon. Okay, I always remember this as schnapps. Okay, if you if you want to think of a different acronym, that's fine. But I always remember schnapps. So we got carbon, which is located right there on the periodic table. It's highlighted by yellow. Then we got hydrogen. So the next one, schnapps, got an N. N, N means nitrogen. Nitrogen makes up about 78% of our atmosphere, so it's going to be an important one. Oxygen, we breathe oxygen in. We use it for cellular respiration. Phosphorus and sulfur are going to be your last two. Now, those are going to be the tricky ones, and so we're going to get to that more later in the unit of, of why phosphorus and sulfur are actually important. So your last one be in sulfur. Okay, so those are your six essential elements that you need to carry on all your living functions. So let's talk about what an organic molecule is and what an inorganic molecule is. Okay, there's very little, there's very little difference except for organic molecules contain a carbon-hydrogen bond. So they're going to have carbon and they're going to have hydrogen. They can have other stuff, but they got to at least have a carbon and a hydrogen. While your inorganic molecules do not contain a carbon-hydrogen bond. Okay, if you look right here, we got carbon dioxide. Well, carbon dioxide does not have a carbon-hydrogen bond. Okay, it can have carbon, it can have hydrogen, but it doesn't necessarily mean they have to be bonded together. Why this being H2O is water. Okay, so carbon dioxide and H2O or water are going to be examples of inorganic compounds. So when you're looking at your organic molecules, you have four major ones that you need to know for this class. The first one being proteins, lipids, nucleic acids, and carbohydrates. Okay, those are going to be your four most important organic molecules that we need to know. Whereas your inorganic compounds, you need to know CO2, which is carbon dioxide, which is the waste product from cellular respiration that we breathe out. And then we have water. Water happens to be the most important inorganic compound. Most important. Most cellular processes take place in water. Again, this is why it makes it most important. And water is also a great, great solvent, which means it dissolves things very, very well. So if it dissolves things very well, our body needs all these different things, these salts, these sugars, these proteins. Water dissolves them. That's a good thing. So we need a lot of it. So carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are, it are organic compounds that contain a carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen bond in the ratio of a one to one. So for every one carbon, you're going to have two hydrogens and one oxygen. Think of it as a hydrated carbon or a carbon with a water attached to it. Because simply, in all actuality, all it is is a CH2O. It's a carbon with a water attached to it. It's a hydrated carbon. Okay. They're made by plants or autotrophs. Remember, those are those things that automatically make their energy from the sun. They're the body's primary source of energy. This is your short-term energy. So when you drink an energy drink, you're really not drinking it because of the caffeine and all this other stuff in it. You're buying it for the sugar. It gives you a great sugar rush, and then you crash at the end. And they're made of what's called monomers or building blocks called monosaccharides. So mono meaning one, a saccharide meaning a simple sugar. So it's made up of one or more simple sugars. Come in two basic forms. you got the monomers, which are just the basics, and then the polymers, which are many. So monosaccharides, again, are called simple sugars. They're easily identified by their sweet taste. Glucose is, a main, is, is, is the main monosaccharide we're going to study. It is C6H12O6. Okay, C6H12O6. You reduce that down, you have the same CH2O formula that we've been talking about. So your other monosaccharides we're going to talk about are going to be fructose and galactose. So fructose is in sugar, galactose is the sugary, milky taste. And the molecules are going to be a ring shaped, and they're going to either have five or six carbons depending on the sugar. Glucose happens to have six carbons. Now, you can't really see the carbons on here, but every time you see a molecule like this, that means there's a carbon there. 
there's a carbon there, okay? There's carbons at all of those little junctions where all those different molecules come together. So polysaccharides are complex carbohydrates. They're made up of long chains of monosaccharides. This happens to be three monosaccharides tied together. So poly meaning many, saccharide meaning sugar. So starches such as bread, cereals, and pastas, and also cellulose are common sources of complex carbs. Cellulose are what you find in the plant, plant, plant cell walls, and starches are like your potatoes. So these are your complex carbs. It's harder for your body to break these down, but these are what you want to eat the night before you run a marathon. And sucrose is an example of a sugar with two monosaccharides. So it's, it's a little bit more complex than glucose, but it's a little least complex than a polysaccharide. It's a more simpler sugar than a polysaccharide. Lipids, okay? Lipids are chemically diverse organic compounds. They contain C's, H's, and O's. So just like a carbohydrate, they contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. But they're made up of what's called a glycerol with three fatty acid tells. And we're, I'll show you a diagram of what I mean by that. So they function in hormones and cell membranes. Okay, and they also work for long-term energy storage. So they help make hormones and make the cell membrane. And they provide us with long-term energy storage. They're insoluble in water, which is a good thing. Okay, they're long-term, so water can't break them down. And you classify them as what's called a saturated fatty acid or an unsaturated fatty acid, a PUFA or a MUFA, which if you've had me long enough, you know I always talk about MUFAs and PUFAs. And your examples are going to be fats, oils, and waxes. So the main place humans store these are our butts or our posterior end. They work as very good insulators and they're also very good cushions. If you fall on your butt, it doesn't hurt as much. They also serve as steroids, which are the chemical messengers in your body. Okay, so when you're looking at a lipid, a lipid is made up of a glycerol with three fatty acid tails. Okay, so your glycerol being this molecule right here, then your three fatty acid tails, I'll do them in a different color, are going to be these molecules right here. It's going to be important to know what the three fatty acid tails are going to look like. Okay, so a glycerol again with three fatty acid tails. or there's a better picture if, if you're OCD. So I always call it an E because it kind of looks like an E. It's a structural shape. It kind of has an E shape to it. So now onto proteins. Proteins are complex organic molecules made up of amino acids, which are needed for the body to function properly. This is just a 3D picture of what a protein structure looks like. So enzymes are going to be the most important component of proteins. They function to control the rate of chemical reactions. So enzymes, which we're going to have a whole nother PowerPoint just over what enzymes do, um, they're pretty important. They help your body speed up the processes that it needs to carry on. And they usually contain a C, O, and H. They have an N, which means amino acid or, an, or amino group. And usually they have a sulfur attached to it as well. Examples of proteins in your body are muscles, hair, cartilage, and nails. Okay, they don't seem very protein-ish. Most people think of protein, I gotta eat a big old hearty steak for my protein. Well, your hair is a protein. Okay, so again, they're made up of a carbon, a hydrogen, and nitrogen, which this section right here happens to be your amino group. Okay. Your R is going to identify what type of amino acid it is, and then it's going to have all these O's and H's as well. So there's your amino group. Your carboxyl group is going to be your C, your double bonded oxygen with your hydroxyl OH at the end. And then the R is going to tell you what amino acid it actually is. So in this instance, the R group, we replaced R with a C with three H's or CH3, which is means that amino acid is alanine. Okay, the same exact structure, but now we have a hydroxyl group instead of just an H, which means we have a serine molecule. And then the last molecule we're going to talk about are nucleic acids. These are very large linear molecules. They contain 
a C, a carbon, a hydrogen, a nitrogen, an oxygen, and phosphorus. Okay, their main purpose is to store genetic information. They also help make proteins. They're made of what's called a nucleotide. A nucleotide is, is just another word for saying something with a sugar, a nitrogen base, and a phosphate. Those three things together make up what's called a nucleotide. Okay, now this right here, when you're thinking about D, the DNA molecule, this is your A's, your T's, your C's, or your G's, your adenine, your thymines, your guanines, or your cytosines. So examples are DNA and RNA. And again, they're made up of what's called a nucleotide. Okay, nucleotide are just repeating. Okay, you have a sugar, a phosphate, a sugar, a phosphate, a sugar. And that's it for today. This has been Coach Heichel. As always, have a great day, and there will be another podcast shortly to come over enzymes. Until next time, have a great day.